Life is not about acquisition. Life is not about accomplishment, how much you do. And it's not about achievement, how much you earn. It's not about all the things the world tells you it's about. You're not taking your career to heaven. You're not taking your car or your house to heaven. But you are taking your character. You're taking you. God put you on earth for 80 to 100 years so you can learn to love. That's what life is all about. Learning to love God with all your heart and learning to love everyone else too. Life is one big love. God is planning what's next for you because He knows that you need a change. He knows that He's taking you to a better destination or guiding you to a more fulfilling life. Trust me when I say God hears your prayers. He's listening to you and He's giving you exactly what you want but in His own way. Maybe His way is different from yours but His way is always the right way. When you ask for happiness and you find yourself drifting away from the people you love, He's telling you that these are not the people to surround yourself with because they drain you. When you ask for peace and you lose your job, He's telling you that your future is better somewhere else. When you ask for love and He gives you heartbreak, He's telling you that you need to make a better choice. Father, I am seeking an outpouring of increased ambition in my life. I ask for boldness to pursue the dreams and goals you have placed within me. Help me to rise above any doubts or fears that may hinder my progress. Your word in reminds me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Strengthen me, Lord, and infuse me with a tenacious spirit to overcome obstacles and push beyond my limits. Guide me on the path of your will, aligning my ambitions with your divine purpose. Grant me wisdom to discern the right opportunities and discernment to choose the paths that bring honor to your name. Fill me with a passion to make a difference in this world and leave a lasting impact. Lord, I know that you are the source of all wisdom and strength. Equip me for the journey ahead and grant me the courage to step out in faith, knowing that you are with me every step of the way. Help me to keep my eyes fixed on you, seeking your guidance and relying on your grave. May my ambitions be a reflection of your love, grace, and transformative power. Use them to bring glory to your name and to spread your light in a world that desperately needs it. But you can ask God to use your pain to guide you in the right direction and thank him for all the ways he will provide for you. You are a product of your past. You have been shaped by the good and the bad things in your life. But you are not a prisoner of your past. You can be free. That's what Christianity is all about. Through Jesus Christ, you can be born again and start a new life. Jesus makes it possible for you to push the reset button and get a second chance. Here's what God says about your past. Forget what happened before and do not think about the past. Look at the new thing I am going to do. It is already happening. I want you to constantly look at the past. If you're always looking in the rearview mirror, then you're going to crash. The only way you can move forward is to focus on the present and look forward to the future. The rest of your life is in the future, not in the past. Your past is past. It's over. You can't change it, so don't dwell on it. Instead, start asking God to do something new for you. Maybe you feel like nothing new is happening in your life right now. You don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Look again at what that says. You don't have it because you don't ask for it. If you've never asked God for a reset in your life, then all you need to say is, God, I need a fresh start. I've blown it. I've made mistakes and I need you to reboot my life. This is the first step to a reset. You just have to ask God for it. Everyone needs a reset at some point because life is hard and we all make mistakes. Are you ready for God to do something new in your life? Ask him for a fresh start and he'll give you renewed energy, a renewed spirit, renewed hope, and a renewed heart. I will never be ashamed of my faith in God. God is my rock, my refuge, and my comforter. If you want your life to count, then you have to focus on it.
You don't have time for everything, and not everything is of equal value. So what should you focus on? Jesus made it very clear what matters most in life. He said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second most important is similar. Love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. Jesus said, There are two things in life that are more valuable than anything else. The first and greatest is loving God. Then, the second most important is loving other people. If you get those two things right, then you've gotten life right. The good thing about the future is that it doesn't hit you all at once. If you had your entire life thrown at you in a single moment, it would no doubt be overwhelming. So God gives it to you in bite-sized, 24-hour segments. He says to pray, Give us this day our daily bread. He wants you to take life one day at a time. That's all you're meant to do. When everything is uncertain and you don't know how to make wise decisions for the future, then just take care of today. God doesn't want you to worry about tomorrow, and He doesn't want you to presume about it either. It's important to plan, pray, and trust God for the future, but God still expects you to put your energy into making today count. Don't brashly announce what you're going to do tomorrow. You don't know the first thing about tomorrow. When everything else in life seems unclear, this is about as clear as you can get. Plan for tomorrow, but live for today. God will give you everything you need to be obedient in both. Even when you're not aware of it, God is directing your life. A person may plan his own journey, but the Lord directs his steps. God likes to direct you through His Word. When we read and study the Bible regularly, that's often all He needs. But many of us don't spend enough time reading God's Word, so another way He'll guide and direct us is through pain. God teaches people through suffering and uses distress to open their eyes. Have you ever thought about why horse riders put a bit in a horse's mouth? It's not for the horse's comfort. The rider uses discomfort to point the horse in a different direction. In the same way, pain guides and directs you and often turns you in a new direction. When King David realized that God was using the pain in his life to point him in the direction God wanted him to go, David was actually grateful for his pain. My suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. God whispers to us in our pleasure, but shouts to us in our pain. Pain is God's megaphone. It never leaves you where it found you. No matter how bad the pain is or where it came from, God can use it to point you toward your purpose. Paul said to the believers at Corinth who were experiencing some discomfort and pain, Now I am glad, not because it hurt you, but because the pain caused you to repent and change your ways. You don't have to be glad that you're experiencing pain. Angel is saying to you, Dear God, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for loving me, forgiving me, healing me, and never leaving me. Loving like Jesus means you must value others the way Jesus values you. You are a child of the King. God created you, and Christ gave his life for you. God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lost their value. It was the precious blood of Christ. Look at the cross. Jesus was willing to die for you. God was willing to give his son for you. That's how valuable you are. Jesus wants you to give that kind of value to everybody else, even the people you can't stand. When Jesus spread his arms wide on the cross, it's like he said, I love them this much, so I expect you, my child, to love these people the same way I love them, because I died for them, not just you. Treat them the same way I treat them. Value them the way I value them. Treat everyone you meet with dignity. One way you treat others with dignity is by looking at them, giving them your attention, and listening to them. Think about the people you come across every day, like the restaurant server, grocery store, 
cashier, or co-worker you pass in the hallway. When those people try to speak with you and you don't give them your attention, you're not being very loving. Love looks and love listens. You can't love without looking. When you look and listen in love, you remind people of their value to you and, ultimately, of their value to God. Plan for tomorrow but live for today. The good thing about the future is that it doesn't hit you all at once. If you had your entire life thrown at you in a single moment, it would no doubt be overwhelming. So God gives it to you in bite-sized, 24-hour segments. Since God gives you only one day at a time, that's how he expects you to approach your life. Live one day at a time and make it count. Jesus taught, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Jesus is saying to stop borrowing trouble. If there's something happening next week, why are you wasting energy today by worrying about it? Worry can't change the past either. Worry only makes you miserable today. God gives you all the grace you need, but just enough for today, every day. He doesn't stockpile all that power in your life and give it to you for the next week or month. Angel is saying to you, For he will give his angels charge concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high, because he has known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him, and honor high with a long life I will satisfy him, and let him behold my salvation. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, shalt thou trample under feet the young lion and the dragon. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Thank you for the blessings and mercies you have bestowed upon me. Today, I come to you with a flaw in my character. I'm having trouble keeping my cool and controlling myself sometimes. So, please give me the strength to be self-disciplined and the will to avoid everything that contradicts your word. Assist me in living a righteous life that pleases you. Assist me in speaking and acting in ways that bring glory to your name. But by waiting until he gives clear direction, you will walk in his peace with certainty instead of stumbling around in anxiety and confusion. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Some of us are such go-getters when God puts something on our hearts, we are willing to give up everything else, start completely over and essentially knock down any door that's in our way to move forward. But the God calling on your life is impossible with just you. 
You see, it's so important to remember that God doesn't just tell us to do something, He guides us through it. And that includes Him getting us in the right place at the right time and allowing us to bump into the people we need. God will send someone in your path at exactly the right moment, and from then on, nothing will be the same. So trust your Heavenly Father and His perfect plan. He has already ordained each of your steps and scheduled each divine appointment. All you have to do is be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. Happy weekend and happy Sabbath. Thank you for keeping me and my family safe throughout the entire week. Thank you for all the blessings you have given me. Lord, I will not take this day for granted because this is a great chance for me to repent all my sins and change myself with the help of the Holy Spirit. Bless all my plans. Guide me in my decisions. Be with me in my journey. No season is ever wasted in God's timeline. Whatever you're going through, no matter how painful it is, God will definitely use it so He can bring you closer to Him. And so I hope you seek, worship, and trust Him more. He is a God who doesn't waste pain. The battle you're going through, God already knows that. The offense, the hurt, the wound, God has seen it all, but He will watch. He wants to see you turn every worry into an opportunity to trust Him deeper. The future you are so worried about God is already there and He will still be faithful. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. God is not just found in your blessings, answered prayers and miracles. God is also in the waiting, He's in your moments of silence. He's in the seeking, asking, and surrendering. He's in hard times. Assist me in avoiding persons and locations that will encourage me to continue with this bad behavior. Give me control over anything that compromises our relationship and assist me in doing things that will bring us closer together. God didn't create Adam for Eve. He created Eve for Adam. She was his missing rib. I try and try to find the person that God created for me, which is and has been futile, because He didn't create somebody for me. I was created for someone. There's someone out there who is looking for His missing rib, me. So I need to stop looking and let Him find me when God wants Him to find me. I also realize that I need to love God more than that person, and that that man needs to love God more than he loves me. I never liked that thought. But now I understand it. By loving God the most and giving myself to Him completely, I can more fully love my spouse and help him get to heaven. You may be struggling with your feelings for a person, but remember, you are somebody's missing rib, so let him find you. Please share this video to your good wishes and to those who want you to be successful. Type Amen. Thanks for watching. Help me, I pray, to be sincere in choosing good over evil. Let my love and concern for others not be a sham. When I work for you, fill me with your Holy Spirit, that I might be committed and enthusiastic in your service. Let me live in your presence and not get so wrapped up in my life that I forget about you. And may I be patient when difficulties arise and not give way to frustration and anger, knowing always that the result belongs to you. Let me not take offense at others. Let me not be thin-skinned. But shielded by the power of your spirit, let me not hear insult where none is intended and shrug off even the most international, let me do my work this day. And if the darkened hours of despair overcome me, may I not forget the strength that comforted me in the desolation of other times, May I still remember the bright hours that found me walking over the silent hills of my chilled hood or dreaming on the margin of a quiet river when a light glowed within me and I promised my early God to have cool rage amid the tempests of the changing years. Spare me from bitterness and from the sharp passions of unguarded moments. May I not forget that poverty and riches are of the spirit 
Though the world knows me not, may my thoughts and actions be such as shall keep me friendly with myself. Lift up my eyes from the earth, and let me not forget the uses of the stars. Forbid that I should judge others lest I condemn myself. Let me not follow the clamor of the world, but walk calmly on my path. Give me a few friends who will love me for what I am, and keep ever burning before my vagrant steps the kindly light of hope. And though age and infirmity overtake me, and I come not within sight of the castle of my dreams, teach me still to be thankful for life, and for time's olden memories that are good and sweet, and may the evening's twilight find me gentle still. Whoever lives and believes in him will not die eternally, but have everlasting life. You have taught us by the holy apostle Paul not to be sorry, as men without hope, for those who sleep in him. I humbly beseech you, O Father, to raise me and all who confess your holy name from the death of sin unto the life of righteousness that, when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and that, at the general resurrection in the last day, we may be found acceptable in your sight. I pray that you will give us that blessing, which your well-beloved Son will then pronounce